In the 80s and 90s, West Yellowstone in Montana was the go-to destination for any serious snowmobiler. But then with access restrictions in the park and other riding areas coming online, its popularity kind of went downhill. But now, it's back as a place to ride. Back in the day, West Yellowstone was the bucket list snowmobile destination. I remember as a kid watching snowmobile videos on VHS tape featuring deep powder, buffalo on the trails, and sleds riding up to Old Faithful, which put this place on my bucket list. Then something changed. Riding restrictions came into effect limiting access in Yellowstone Park. These restrictions included limitations on where you could ride, even the type of sleds were restricted, with only four-stroke, low-emission sleds even allowed inside the park and then you were restricted to guided trail tours only. At the same time, mountain riding was exploding with manufacturers building better and better powder sleds, along with other riding areas quickly being developed throughout the Alpine of North America. All of this conspired together and West Yellowstone seemed to fade into the limelight, even for me, because I thought this destination began and ended with the park, but I was wrong, and I realized this the first time I came to the area for snowshoot. For us in the media, for the last decade, we all make the trek to West Yellowstone for the annual snowshoot, an event where all the manufacturers get together with their next season sleds so we can ride, evaluate, and gather the photos and videos we all need to produce the magazines, internet content, and television shows for you, our readers and watchers. Yeah, I know, it's a pretty good gig. To be able to test the latest and greatest sleds from every manufacturer all in one amazing place to ride is something we all look forward to. Now, it's a pretty grueling week with lots of pressure to get the job done, but each day is another best day at work type of day. And if we tell you any different, we're lying to you. Most of the time, we're pretty focused on riding and accumulating the media we need, but every so often we get to go out on an extra long loop while testing a new snowmobile, or maybe it's a strategic, whoops, I got lost for a while in the Alpine, and that gives us a chance to not only enjoy the sleds, but also the whole area around West Yellowstone outside of the park boundaries. It's these experiences that inspired me to tell you more about the area because Yellowstone really is a special place to be. And it all starts with the town of West Yellowstone. It's a cool place and snowmobile friendly is an understatement. Riders have access to the town on sections of roads that are left unplowed to get you to and from its services. Now there's unique hotels and restaurants along with gift shops for souvenir hunting and a great nightlife for apres snowmobiling. And you can't forget about the Yellowstone Historic Center with its displays on the history of the park and the animals of Yellowstone. They even have a grizzly bear and wolf discovery center where you can get way closer to these huge animals than you'd ever want to be in the wild. West Yellowstone is a tourist town, no doubt, and it's used to huge crowds that flock to it each summer because of its proximity to the West Gate and into the park itself. So in the winter, it's more than capable to keep up with the snow crowd. And if you're the type of person who doesn't enjoy big tourist crowds, winter in Yellowstone could be for you. And even though it may not have the crowds, there's still all the good stuff to do. Snowcat and snow bus tours into the park are available one after the other, or there's guided snowmobile tours on approved rental machines if you wanted a more open air experience. And each will get you into the park to experience Old Faithful and the animals, not to mention the bragging rights you get by saying you've ridden in Yellowstone Park. The town and park alone are a great experience for anyone, even those strange folks who don't consider themselves snowmobilers. But for us who know what snowmobiling is all about, the riding areas around West Yellowstone are as epic and cool as the town itself.
Catering to tourists, this extensive trail system is extremely well-groomed and can take you from the town right to the Alpine. There's not much for services out there, so if you do crave snacks or warm beverages, you'll need to bring those with you and fuel, it's only available in town. But you'll have no problems getting out and back from wherever you want to go on a single tank. Rentals are also plentiful and include everything from tour-up tours right up to the latest mountain sleds. Now guides are also available, which I highly recommend anytime your skis point to the alpine slopes. A guide can not only keep you safe, but they can get you to all the good spots, ones you'd never be able to find on your own. We've been here a number of times and are slowly finding all the little honey holes to ride in and the best trails to shoot on. In fact, practically all the footage you see on STV for the first burn segments are shot in and around Yellowstone. This is also the place where many of the manufacturers shoot their product videos and do photography. So chances are, you've seen more photos and video from this area than you realize. This alone should tell you how good this place is to be. Now one thing I've never done is actually ride inside the park. There never seemed to be enough time to do this part of the Yellowstone experience when I've been here for snowshoot, but I have a feeling I'm going to solve that problem pretty soon. Having great trails with alpine access is something that's fairly common. There's all kinds of places for that experience, but there is only one Yellowstone Park and the town of West Yellowstone that makes this area unique. The experience of West Yellowstone is not only great for the boys, but this area is perfect for a family getaway as well. If this place isn't on your bucket list of snowmobile destinations, it should be.